So the Field Museum, <laughs> the Field Museum has over 40 million specimens in our collection, uh, about 13,000 of which are meteorites. And we have a variety of ways, like ways of storing meteorites here at the Field Museum. We have cabinets that we put them in. We want to keep them dry, basically. And we have various ways to keep them dry, from desiccant bags to nitrogen cabinets, all the way to down to liquid nitrogen storage. And so we recently started storing specimens in liquid nitrogen. That's 195 degrees Celsius, negative degrees Celsius. 320 degrees negative Fahrenheit. So very cold. So it is very safe what Jim is now demonstrating. We should, shouldn't touch the liquid. The reason why he wears the face shield is so he doesn't get any splash on his face. But he's been, he has a lot of experience with this, so nothing to worry about. It's just liquid air. heating up the compartment around it. And so we have these large doers in our basement that we can store specimens. And usually it's for tissue samples, but we're one of the first museums in the country to actually store meteorite samples in the connection. And Jenica's gonna put it in. You can see it's starting to bubble up. That's literally the liquid nitrogen boiling. As it hits the warmer object of the surrounding tube, eventually it'll stabilize, it'll drop the temperature down to negative 320 degrees. And one of the ways that we actually disaggregate these meteorites or break them up into smaller pieces so we can actually analyze them is by using a freeze thaw method to cool the meteorite, then heat it up, then cool it again. But this is done in water and it's done over, very, over a lot of cycles. So by doing this just once, we're not gonna take it out except when we really need to. This really helps preserve the meteorite, especially these volatile. So uh, Philip said that this was a hyper-volatile meteorite, and you can actually measure the amount of volatiles that a meteorite loses by weighing it before and after. And we've actually seen that loss already in samples that haven't been cryogenically frozen. You can 